So how's it going everybody? Um, today what we're going to do is we're working on this 98 uh, Mercedes. It's a CLK. 3.2. Got a little hood leaf. Pull it forward. Always pull it forward and then lift at the same time. I'm going to try to do it with my hand. Of course, I don't trust holding on to just that plastic part. Ugh. But here you go. Six cylinder, 3.2. And the EGR valve is uh, not working. If you don't know what an EGR valve is, let me explain. So the EGR valve is this thing right here. It's not where it's normally at, but this one right here is a used one, but so it does look a little dirty. But you have the with an EGR valve, this is an emissions control device. So it will if it doesn't work, your car won't run. It'll still run. It's just it'll produce more, a lot more uh, pollutants in the environment. So the government for cars that had over a certain amount of pollutants had to require to have one of these. Uh, what it does, it gets the exhaust gases from your, all well, the un, unburnt stuff from the exhaust and it sends it into this port here. This little electrical connector. Some of the times it's vacuum hoses, other times it's like electrical connection. Uh, will trigger a little plunger in here, which will get the air in here and recirculate it back into the intake. So then it'll, it'll get sucked back in and and uh, get reburned again. So all the stuff that hasn't been burnt will get reburned. So. I was pointing that a lot of cars have these, but not all of them have them. So right now, if you look in this engine, this is the, like I said, a 3.2 liter. This will be located near the rear of the engine. But as you notice, one thing, this engine has a lot of plastic. We're gonna take off this plastic cover to says Mercedes Benz. I noticed there's a crack right here in the rear. So we're gonna be careful of that, not the. Now you can see why I keep the plastic on it. It's a lot nastier. The EGR valve, I can see it right here in the back. It's underneath the intake hose and some other stuff. So some things gotta get gotta get removed. Uh, it's not gonna be as simple as I anticipated, or uh, nothing that can't not be done. Let's start getting stuff off for the EGR. Just to show you, the EGR is right under this metal hose down in there. So I'm gonna start with taking off the hose. We're gonna go from there. The bolt I had to take off was one down there. That one. Now the pain. Got it out. I used to a 10 millimeter wrench. So, easy way to take this off. I was trying to get it off the hose. But that just pops right up off a pop of a rubber tab. That comes off, so progress. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of origami here. So the hose that connects over here that connects to the intake is super brittle. It's like rubber, but it's starting to crack a little bit. I don't want the hose to break because then it'll be broken and I wouldn't be fixing anything. So the only thing is I'm gonna lay this down here. There's two bolts behind here on this metal hose I'm gonna take loose to get that out. And then I'm gonna pick this part up like this. Try to move out of the way and get the bolts back here and try to fish the EGR for up from behind. So I'll start with that. The bolts that are holding this thing in is, uh, I'm using an E12. These on the inside look like a star. It's a star. So it turns out it was actually an E10. There you go. E10. Which is still a star pattern. The bolts look like this. It's like... It's not going to be a regular bolt that looks like that. I finally got this one out. This one was a pain in the butt, and I'll show you why in a second. So, right here is where the bolt was. But this thing right here is in the way, and you can't remove that. I took the hose off to give myself a little more clearance, and this part right here just cracked right out of the, uh, out of nowhere. Just using the ratchet and hit it, and it broke off, but I started bleeding because I keep, like, catching my knuckle and stuff. So I took a piece of my skin off. Put it there, but I want to dry it up already. But not bad. But it's cold, so I don't really feel it yet. But it feels warmer. Yeah, you know, I don't feel it. Like pick this thing up. The bolt right there. So those two bolts. And this thing will be out. Those are also E10s, I believe. <sighs> Fun stuff. Man, golly, that bolt so much longer. I've got the hose to whittle off. Uh, 
about it. All right, since it's loose, this part's coming off. Got a little connection there, we're gonna have to unconnect. And then we got this hose right here. That's on this thing. You got the wrenches and I'm gonna take them off. It's a 22 and a 24. And we're just going to take it off. Okay, that was actually really easy. So there's something on this engine that could have been seized. You better believe that it was seized. Taking that nut off though, kept sliding a little bit, but the little threads on here were a little messed up. So it was a pain in the butt to get that thing off, but this is the old one, finally got the old one off. I wanna leave the metal hose in there just because there is no way that was coming out, that was coming off due to that firewall being in the way without me taking the intake off, which that was not happening. I mean, there's probably a way. I couldn't figure out a way. Um, working on this thing, I'm a little bit out of my league here. Yeah, this hose right here looks a little... Every hose in here looks like that. But here's the new one. This hose is in way better condition. Still a little dry right there, but I mean, these hoses look a lot nicer. The other one didn't look too bad on the inside. Oh, it's hard to see with the light. Here's the old one. It doesn't look too bad compared to the new one, which is the new one's right here on the right. Uh, my guess is, like I said, that rose, hose, rose, compared to the left and right, this hose in the worst shape. My guess is that it created a vacuum leak or something. And one thing Mercedes is known for is vacuum leaks with a million and five different vacuum hoses. I know with the newer stuff, they don't have as many, but like with the old stuff, especially from the 80s, dude. Anyway, I'm gonna go and attempt to put this back on, get everything working, and um, yeah. Would have done time lapse, but this is actually, I'm actually clean that mating surface up real quick, but this is what the last one's at. This one came with the gasket. Or I didn't come with the gasket, but reason the old gasket is because I don't have a new gasket and you don't want to put it on without a gasket. So anyway, here's this, and then twisting this up, I'm gonna have to untwist that, but yes, yeah, so it's right there on the lock. That's, yeah, right there. And then it kind of just hangs off the side, off the back here. That right there is the transmission. Here's the back of the engine. That's where the air goes in, throttle the body. Ta -da. But, yeah, there's not a lot of room to get down there though. <laughs> Other news while I'm putting this back on, I'd like to congratulate everybody for, well, 80 people, I guess, for subscribing. We're at 80 subscribers now, which is insane, because I had no subscribers, not even a year ago. Okay, I started my first YouTube, uh, I'm gonna get the bolt. I started my, I started the YouTube channel on, it was June 15th, I think, is when I posted, June or July, I'm gonna say it's June 15th when I posted my first video of the repaint and wave promoters. I did that one and the speaker video at the same time. Speaker video absolutely blew up, which is amazing. But 80 subscribers, y'all. Never would have thought. Not only I wouldn't have never thought, but never thought so soon. The small hose that was corroded, that was uh, actually still attached to the block. I don't have a replacement hose for that anywhere, so. But anyways, I just trimmed it a little bit because it had a hole in it. Which was letting in vacuum leak, which was no bueno. Trimmed it up a little bit, got a little tight, but then I ended up putting it back. I flipped it, and so now it's on a block, and it's on the EGR, so that's looking good now. So yeah, so. Everything, oh, I didn't plug it in. Oh my gosh. What kind of person am I? Now it's time to reassemble everything that we take apart to get to it okay we should be done now every clamp should be clamped down and plugged in all the sensors are supposed to be plugged in every hose is plugged in it's all it's all good it's all connected now go start her up i did make sure i unplugged the battery before i started the job uh should have mentioned that before but now we're gonna plug it back in Hopefully the battery's good. Yep, sounds like it's good. <laughs> Plugged in. 
If you guys noticed the entire time of the video, this car only has one windshield wiper. It just like flaps around. Um, this has nothing to do with the job at all, but with these keys, just one of those old Mercedes keys. A lot of the new, uh, they use this key for a while. But on the bottom, you have a little black little slide. You slide it up, and an actual key comes out. And that's so uh, this quit working because the battery died or something. You can still get in your car with this, which and they had it in the key. Which is pretty smart. I know, uh, I think Mercedes or I want to say it was Mercedes, but actually one of the first ones wants to do this, but don't quote me on that. But I'm pretty sure. But we're gonna go start the car. If anything was to go wrong, you guys will see it first. I'm testing or I'm turning the car on now just like a see it run first before I try to put the covers on. Sounds like a tractor. There's the car. Sounds like there's a leak in the exhaust somewhere under there. And I, since the battery is unplugged, everything's gone. The check engine lights out there no more, but like I said, the battery is unplugged. You gotta drive around for a little bit, but shoot, stay off. This thing got heated seats? Hell yeah. My butt's cold. Oh, like I was saying. So, um, yeah. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna have to move the pilot, just back that up a little bit. So, put the car back on, clean up all my tools. They had this thing running the whole time. I haven't seen the check engine light come back on, which is a good thing. One thing about Mercedes is, uh, some especially like Volt, uh, Volkswagen BMWs, it has that waxy crayon kind of smell. Like once you smell, there's no mistaking that you're in something German. Drives really nice for the age and whatnot. Those guys stop things. So we're gonna stop. But yeah, doing pretty good. The gauges. Uh, all those lights are over here turned off and it's all good now. We just came back from our road test. Car drove perfectly fine. There's everything still off. We're at operating temperature. So that right there is how I replace the EGR. I'm going to say that's the professional way of doing it, but that's how I replace the EGR valve in this 98 Mercedes CLK. Uh, 3200.2. If anybody's interested, I'll do these wipers for you. They have two stocks here, by the way. You have one right here for cruise control, and you have another one right below it. You don't have any stocks on this side. That's because you got your key there. But that's pretty cool. So That's how that works. I don't know if you notice it. If you're in slow motion, it when it goes over, it bounces like shimmies. <laughs> But that's <laughs> that's how that works. Interesting, interesting. Um, but yeah, take the key out. We're good to go here. I don't know if it needs to be done with this thing. In regards to the EGR valve, this thing needs to go get inspected. So I'm gonna go let it get that done on it at some point. But satisfying clunk. It's a nice car. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, please let me know about doing this job. Uh, if I could rate this from 1 to 10, 1 being super easy, 10 being I, I would get a professional to do it. I would say this is this is around 4, 4 or 5. It was a little bit of a pain, took longer than I thought, however. Um, the, the biggest part was just not having enough enough room to, to get everything done. The, car, the job itself was pretty fine but i'm gonna stick my tripod in my car and see you guys in the next video next video is gonna be another tech review video so look out for that one so just for 
I got the reference. Here's the EGR valve on a Honda. This is the 1.8 liter. The front of the engine's this way. This is a transversely mounted engine just because it's front wheel drive. So your belt and everything would be right here on this side. Whereas on the Mercedes, is on the front of the engine because the engine's mounted a long ways because it's rear wheel drive. But for here, you have a bolt there. Easy to get to. Bolt there, a little bit tighter to get to, but I mean, still easy to get to. And it's one electrical connection, and this whole thing comes right out. You don't have to remove anything else.